Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to say good morning. Uh, good morning, this class. Um, this is the 10th session, as we say, uh, out of uh, the other sessions remaining. The journey on uh, <clears throat> in strategic management. And we say it's a process. So, and welcome the four of you. We are still uh, waiting for the others. Katule Margaret, how are you? Hello, Katule. Are you listening? Josephine, are you listening? Yes. Yes, how are you, Margaret? Yes, Lillian, how are you? And, uh, I'm very fine, thank you, sir. Karibu sana, Karibu. Rostondop, how are you? I'm fine, sir. Yes, Good. sir. Karibu, Karibu. So I hope others will be joining as we go along. Today's journey is taking us through a uh, number of things I'll be sharing shortly. But so far, how is everything doing? Anybody, how is everything doing in terms of this course? Are we are we together in this course? Are we moving on well? Or are there areas that are uh, of concern? Maybe some of you might want to ask. I'll give you an opportunity now as we start. You can also think about next last class, last week's class. And uh, today's class, it's, I'm glad that we have we are using the big blue button. Last time, we had issues about it. You know, the ICT team with the ZDS school uh, are working on ensuring that uh, we communicate uh, and we interact uh, uh, without any much uh, uh, problem or ado. So we cop uh, we appreciate their work uh, in that department. We also appreciate the work of the university providing this uh, opportunity for us to interact and learn. And I believe it's also the same for you, your parents and yourselves, and your sponsors. I'm sure they are happy that uh, learning has never stopped. And I want to assure you, it will never stop. Because of challenges, challenges are made for us to have new opportunities, new innovations, new ways of doing things a different way. As I said last time, uh, I'll say it again, but last year this time, if somebody said and told you or me that, you know, next year this time you'll be having, you'll not be meeting physically, but you'll be using Zoom and uh, you'll be using the big blue button and uh, you'll also be using uh, technology and learning, uh, people would have laughed at you, laughed completely and said, now your head is gone bongas. But now it's a reality. So listen, gentlemen, we are happy that the reality is here with us. And the reality is like the picture you see over there. We see a picture. What picture do we see here, ladies and gentlemen? Yes, Katula and I, and the others who have just joined us. I want to say Karibun Sana. What do we see in this picture, ladies and gentlemen? What do we see there? Yeah? Picture of the day. What do we see there? Either you can raise your hand and uh, respond, or you can uh, not respond directly. You can also do what we call, you can also send a message. What do we see in this picture? What does this picture depict? Does this picture show? What does this picture show? Yeah? Mm. Look at that picture. What is it, first of all? Alan Odor, hi, how are you, Karibu? What do we see in this picture, ladies and gentlemen? Yeah? Jacqueline Namoke, hi again. Yeah, what do we see in this picture? Yeah, I want to see from you guys. I want to read. Anybody can say something. What do we see here, Rostendop? What do we see in this picture? And what does it depict? Hmm. Yes, Josephine, hello. Anybody, yes? Flying ego. An ego, Irene, yes, it's an ego. Flying ego, yes. What else? Ego flying, yes. What does it depict? What does it show? A picture of an ego, right? This a picture of an ego, yes. But what do we see? Tell me in terms of um, the course we're in. Mm. Can you relate it to, relate it to the course we're in, related to strategic management? 
Ah, I will ask that question. Relate. Yeah. Do strategic management. We see it's an ego, yes, but can we relate to strategy management? Yeah. Relate the picture to strategy management. Hmm. Let's it share. Wow. Soaring high. This looks like um, in the northern hemisphere. You see in the background, those are not clouds, that's snow. Yeah, a little determination, yes. Our vision as a company, yes. Karonji, thank you. Thank you, Richard. Uh, Rory, yes. What else? What else to think a little more? The ego is looking for opportunity to strike, yes. Uh -huh. Vision is to look far ahead like it does. Yeah. You must have strategy for to, to, tomorrow, not like the flying ego. Eh? Tomorrow, not like the flying ego. Okay. You must have strategy. I think Jacqueline might need to say more about that. But you see, as you see the ego, look at what we have done so far in looking at the defining, explaining, strategy formulation, strategy implementation. That's what we did last time, implementing strategy. Mm. Look at where we are now. You must have strategy for tomorrow. That's right. But where are we? Assume this is a company. You must have strategy to fly. Yes, this is a company. We say strategic management touches on what? It touches on competitive advantage. You remember that? And forget that. Competitive advantage. So what does the ego have when you look at it? There are no other birds nearby. The others are below. It's near. Must have strategy for me, okay? Strategy planning for objective achievement, yes. But as we see, the ego is above all others. There are no other birds. Even if you see in the horizon, you'd be seeing other birds flying around or below there or higher, none. This shows you companies have to fly high. When you look at the companies that are blue chip companies, you know, I may use that term, blue chip companies, those companies whose shares are selling like blue, like chips. Many people like hotcakes, eh? Like hotcakes, you may say. Blue chip companies, those companies that are really, uh, you know, they're golden companies. They're those ones that you want to invest in or work for or be associated with. That's what happens. So look at the ego. Look at the ego flying that high and very determined, very focused. You can see that. Strategy planning to, uh, for objective achievement, yes. See that ego is going and it's balancing. You can see the wings. Look at the wings, real balanced. If one wing is lower, the other, the bird might tip, tip, uh, tip over. Look at the legs, where are they folded properly? They are supposed to be in the right place. They are not hanging around as if it is landing. <laughs> yeah. So companies fly, and when they fly, they are actually looking at the horizon. Even in COVID-19, companies are looking, they are on the lookout. The, v, the, the ego there shows it's in the lookout. It's looking. It's seeing far. And at the same time, it's looking at how it is it is flying. You know, it's every system go. I pray, I pray that some of you, or not all of you, one day fly. The fly is very exciting, going to plane and flying far, far. You sit near the wing and you see how the plane moves. It goes like that at speed. You just hear the humming sound mm, as the plane flies. And it's steady. Pilot that time is very observant, keen to ensure that they know the weather ahead, they know the fuel consumption, the, the plane, if they know air pressure in the cabin, ensuring that all is well, so that nothing can occur while it's that height. Nothing untoward occurs. So the pilot and co-pilot, that normally for flights, especially the international big flights, then they have a pilot and a co-pilot. And the captain and the first officer, they call them that. And they're all alert. In fact, I had an opportunity to see the cockpit of one of the planes. Cockpit is in the front side where the pilot sits. And they were showing me two pilots, the pilot and the co-pilot. They have exact the same instruments. When you are seated there, just like you are steering wheel. You are steering wheel, not steering wheel, it's a gadget. And then all the instruments there are also on the other side of the co-pilot first officer. So all of them are alert to ensure that the plane flies as planned and scheduled. Fuel tanks, they filled it before they took off. They checked that before they left, by the way. Before they left, they have a checklist of hundreds of items before the plane takes off from the, from the airport. 
that in fact the pre-flight uh, they said check checks and they told me see listen uh we are we're doing what is necessary before we fly and i i watched very interesting i sat there Courtesy of my son-in-law, one of his son-in-law, said, my, uh, Dad, see the, the copilot, so you see what it is, what's happening there. I said, I see they call it jump, jump seat. So I was there, they told me, please, you sit and you, you, you don't do anything. You listen and see what we do. We'll be telling you what. So they checked hundreds of things. When the pilot counts like that, he says, yes, yes. The other checking as they go along all the lists. Everything's okay before they take off. And when they took off up there while they're in there, like this ego, they are actually monitoring, ensuring that the fuel, the pressure, everything's okay, the direction they are going, the winds, everything's going as planned. Should there be any problem? And they are communicating with the ground, uh, with the ground uh, 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 officers, because AT, ATS, air, air traffic controllers in every country. When the plane leaves Nairobi, for example, going to London, when they leave the Kenya airspace, first of all, they're in, in touch with the ground uh, people, the uh, ATCs, air traffic controllers at Jomo Kenyatta International Airport. Before they're given fly, okay, okay to, to fly to, 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 to take off, normally they would communicate with the, the tower, communication tower. Wait, move your plane now next. You are the next one. As the first one which is ahead of you is going, because it's like a matatu lining up, vehicles lining up. So the first one goes now, this one of ours, it comes next. When it goes next, they give him an okay. Now the flight the captain says, "Is a gentleman? We now been given an okay to to uh, to take off and fasten your seat belts, and they will be flying at this speed." That uh, they will tell you a lot of stuff about preparation. Then when it takes off, and it's gone to the height where it is now, like that, that uh, ego, that ego is flying at some level. And when the plane is reached, they say cruising speed at twenty-eight thousand or thirty thousand feet or thirty-five thousand feet above sea level. When it's flying at that speed, you know, it's going on the ground. It has to leave. It lifts over about 253, 300, 250, 260 uh, kilometers per hour. That's the speed. Then you see lifting, taking off. Lifts off the engine full throttle, all up to there. When it gets up there, cruising speed, then they will talk to you now. Switch of the, now the seat belts. Uh, has switched over, but you advise to sit and keep your seat belts on. And then as it flies out, the cockpit fellows are very, they, pilot and the first officer are very busy observing and making sure that the instruments are reading right and communicating with the, uh, the air traffic controllers on the ground. When they leave the Kenyan airspace to go into the Sudan airspace, they will communicate with Khatoum. The, the, the ATCs, the air, air traffic controllers at Khatoum airport will uh, now identify, they will identify themselves, you know. It's routine flight, so they know. Then from there, they're handed over to the next one, up to the Cairo. Then above and goes into the Mediterranean, and then they hand it over to one of them in Italy somewhere, and all the way up to up to London. Very exciting flight. What happens is the pilots are very busy checking, ensuring that all is okay. They are evaluating, monitoring. They use the term monitoring the flight, and they are also as they continue, you see on the ground they have. Uh, each each country they go to, uh, the the this uh, aircraft traffic controllers they will always communicate with them, uh, and so on. If there's anything that is unusual, and so on and so forth, and they're watching. If there are clouds ahead, they may ask permission to go higher. Like the flight we were using, the one I sat in the cockpit. The pilot said, "Look, we can put autopilot, but we can't here, uh, short distance and so on. And then we cannot fly higher. If we see clouds ahead, we can ask the air traffic controller to uh, direct us whether to fly, give us permission to fly higher or go lower or turn direction, because each one is charted, very very precise, flying at the speed, at that height, at that uh, latitude, and so on that direction. So there is monitoring as you go along." until the plane lands. When it's landing, okay, the London Heathrow Airport, the London Heathrow Airport, of course, the air traffic controller will be saying, okay, uh, yes, identify yourselves. This is Kenya Airways KQ551 from London, from Nairobi to London. It's a passenger flight. Okay, given permission, uh, you might be the next, so you circulate there if there are other planes landing and taking off. You know, it's very interesting how they control it. And they are all the time monitoring to ensure that they get the communication and then they land. Very interesting. I encourage you to fly one of these even local flights and see, and ask to be in the pilot's place. I mean, cockpit to see what happened. Now, monitoring and evaluation. Today's class is touching on monitoring. When we talk of monitoring, 
that ego as it flies it, it, it has to fly with a certain speed and ensure that it's landing it is uh, seeing and so on with the businesses and companies unless there are sudden events like the COVID-19 that brought in a lot of other changes and so on most of the companies the, the, the key people top management will always be looking ahead in terms of performance Winston Churchill which all of us know a wartime hero president uh, prime minister of, of, of UK of United Kingdom I would uh, encourage you to read about Winston Churchill and uh, how this man led the British army into the war and he, he actually played the role in the Allied forces fighting about uh, the Second World War. Anyway, the Allied forces, America and the others won with the, the, the Hitler. But the thing is, Winston Churchill said as a as famous uh, leader, wartime leader, and this is what he said, however beautiful the strategy you have, you should occasionally look at the results. However beautiful you have, you are flying, yes, from Nairobi to London Heathrow. You have a good strategy. You'll fly at this height. You'll fly in that direction. You'll turn at that point, you know, precisely. But you always be looking at, are we doing well in terms of direction? The winds, are they okay? The pressure in the cabin, is it okay? Is all everything all right? Pressure and so on. So you check everything. So you continue to check the progress also. Are we moving? We have now a Kenyan airspace, Sudan, Ethiopia, going on. You're going to London, going through Egypt, you know, Cairo, above Cairo, go to cross the Mediterranean and so on. So you monitor and see how you are doing. Some flights, they used to have, uh, you have a, a monitor, every seat had one, you can, you could fall actually your flight, but they removed them because of security. So you could follow where you are. You can see the planes moving. We have taken off from Nairobi. You can see from a map how it moves, real time. Shows you it's turning now. You're over flying like through Kana, flying into Sudan. You see, you see. So the same thing with the companies, you have to monitor. And that's why you have reports. You have reports like uh, quarterly reports. You have a uh, half year reports, the result results. Normally they say results of our company this year. We have surpassed results last year at the same time. And then you have at the end of the year annual reports, where you have financial reports and so on and so forth, report the AGM and so forth. You know, you monitor. That's what it means. In strategy evaluation, what you are really doing is you are evaluating your strategy. It's not just evaluation, but monitoring and evaluation of your strategy. Our strategy is to expand. We want to expand our business. How do we expand? We want to grow to three more branches by the end of the year. Then you have your plan saying, by half year we'll have done one branch. Uh, we'll be doing, look at the second branch. By the, the, towards the end of the year, we'll have finished the third branch. We'll have done, expand the third branch. You see, you have to evaluate to see how we are going in that direction. Human resource expansion, production, and so on. All those things you have to look at. Now, the objective of this class this morning is to discuss and appreciate strategy evaluation for an organization. I want to appreciate it. Yes? Analyze the strategy evaluation process. Look at the process of evaluation. Appreciate the importance of strategy evaluation and evaluate the principles of strategy evaluation. This is the menu for today, ladies and gentlemen, for this class. And again, I want to welcome those who came in after we had started. And I want to also encourage you to be very interactive. Use the, use the big blue button, as we are on the blue, big blue button. Uh, we have the chat box here. Let's do chat. And uh, as we chat here, I see a number of you uh, uh, aiming higher. The, the go back to the chat box here. I see some of you. Uh, Rosson Dob said that the image indicates an eagle flying in high high as indicated of going to high heights. Very good. The company ensuring to achieve their vision through determination. That's good. You saw that the eagle. Those of you saw the picture. Very interesting. Eh? I like eagles. They are very interesting birds. Mentioned many times in the Bible, by the way. Ego is a bad, but uh, I think God chose it because of its characteristics that it uses it for many things. You see many countries have an ego as their emblem on their flags and so on. So anyway, so the ego is flying high, aiming, you know, to achieve the vision. Image also indicating the company's new opportunities and fulfillment goals. Yes, Felix is Bogo. That's interesting. That's good. Now, so these are our, our objectives for today. This is the menu. Let's look at the first one here. The first one here, we look at introduction, strategy evaluation. What strategy? What is it? We know evaluation is judgmental. 
you want to see whether you have done it or not. You did exams. Many of you do exams. All of us do exams when you go to school anyway. Exams, whatever you are. Or you are doing an interview, you are evaluated to see whether you are suited for the job or not. But here, formally, when you talk of strategic evaluation, is defined as the process of determining the effectiveness of a given strategy in achieving the organization objectives and taking the corrective action wherever required. Wow! It is one. It's a process. It's not a one shot. It's a process. And as I said earlier, it's related to its cousin called monitoring. Monitoring is a daily, like monitoring temperature. You know, every few hours, a person comes from theater every every half an hour, every hour, every then they move to three hours, and they have, have a day, then they move into 12 hours, they, they monitor. They see the temperature is coming, normalizing, things like those. Or the reaction of the bodies is like that. Okay, so everything, even in, in, in business, we also monitor and evaluate. And here, strategic evaluation is then, strategic evaluation itself is a process determining the effectiveness. It means how effective, how efficient is our strategy in terms of the direction we are going, just like the ego, looking at aiming at how are you going. Strategy evaluation then means, you know, strategic evaluation and strategy evaluation. It's good for you to look at the difference. Strategic evaluation, strategic process, the whole process. But strategy evaluation, which is still part of, which is really, let me say, is a part of the heart of strategic evaluation is the collection of the information about how well a strategy is doing our strategic plan if our strategic plan was saying for the first month uh which is down to the if you do business plan business plan is actually part of strategic plan except it's plan for a year so the plan is saying by a quarter year we'll have expanded our product line by two more products that's what your strategic plan says expansion of growth 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 in terms of products and we want to have new products so by quarter year three months down the road we'll have developed a third a second line of production of products you will evaluate that have we at the end of the two or three months have we brought in the new product are we in the process of getting a second product or service we are offering that's what it means how well are we progressing because if you say in five years time we should be having let's say five new products and we have expanded to four new locations and we have grown our company revenue from 10 percent uh, right now we are doing at 30 million we want to multiply five times 150 million those are your objectives and we have human resource we have department so you'll show this in terms of going for the five years so evaluation is looking at this in terms of are we achieving this pro progressively as we go along have we achieved if the strategy was to expand by biological means that means as we grow we are expanding by growth as customers increase we green increase you have to look at that in terms of are we doing as we had planned based on our projections strategy evaluation is the last phase of the strategic management process yes evaluation is the last normally because it's summative you look at do we achieve or do we not there is also mid-term evaluation, which means midway. That's why when you do a project, you have mid-term evaluation. We have quarterly, then mid quarterly, yearly, mid-term, and final evaluation, which means you are looking progressively at where, where are you. When you do, let's say, quarterly, and you see realize that you are not going the right direction in terms of you have not reached where you had expected, you may revise even the yearly plans and also revise your projections and so on it's the same thing the same which says aim at the sun and land on the moon your aim is the sun but when you come to realize you evaluate oh my we didn't reach the moon the sun we have reached at the moon so you are still satisfied you moved anyway so businesses do the same thing if they are to multiply five, five times five years time and they only multiply three times there are challenges probably you didn't foresee or there are new changes like the covid 19 that book came in and therefore disrupted the way things are done so strategy evaluation is the last phase of the strategic management process in which managers try to assure that the strategic choice is properly implemented and is meeting the objectives it was set for that's what it means uh, when you talk about strategic a uh, strategic evaluation or strategy evaluation and as we go along there are many things that get into this and as we see here even yourselves 
before we look at necessity of strategic evaluation and control system, before we look at this, even yourselves, I'm sure you are evaluating yourself even performance, not only that, you are looking at graduating in three years' time, uh, calendar years, but academic years are four years. Calendar years are really taking two semesters by year. Uh, calendar years. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, calendar years are going three semesters, trimesters by year. But academic years, two semesters by year, so two to four years. But the other one we do in three years. So you've also set your goals to graduate in three years' time, which is the third year for most of you now. You're actually on, on the exit side. So you are evaluating yourself, how you are performing, year one, year two. You know, if you didn't do year one very well, you must have done some supplementaries and so on. Some of you repeated, some of you other issues came up. Now you're struggling, you are reaching the last. You are now doing your last semester. You are going to be graduating at the end of the year. Congratulations, advance. So there was monitoring and there was evaluation. Business do the same thing, they monitor. That's why quarterly reports, they normally uh, they don't publish as much, but half yearly results. Some companies publish half year results. This year, uh, this, this time last year, this is what we're doing. We're doing sales at 50 million. This year, we are doing it at 75 million. So we have a difference. We have grown by a percentage here. We have grown by 25%. Or 50 percent which we are better compared to last year but compared to our plan for this year what should we be doing maybe we are not doing very well we should be doing maybe 75 not 65 but 75. so those are things that you evaluate as you go along so it's a process evaluate strategy evaluation and control system may help managers to find out a number of things what are the benefits what are the reasons why we do this? Number one, whether the implementers of strategy are making decisions consistent with organizational policies. Are decisions made correctly? Invest, buy raw materials from this, carry on, more shifts, uh, combine your, your staff to ensure that we achieve the objective. So, implementers strategy are making right decisions consistent with organizational policies. Adequate resources have been allocated, yes. Finance, have they provided the resources that were planned for? Or is there a hitch in those resources in finding? You heard yesterday, uh, if you are listening to the news, this governor, uh, Paranya chairman of COG, COG, eh? you're saying money has not come from treasury, so we have not implemented all the projects that we are supposed to implement. He said that, actually, he's reported publicly, he was saying that, that money is not coming as expected and from treasury. But on the other hand, also, the, the, this, uh, these fellows are interesting, the, the, the reporters, they were reporting and giving a report that as we talk about funding, this current financial year that's just ended, or we've got a new one, the past current financial year, these county governments did not use the money they were allocated. They talked of a number of counties. You go to this paper, I'm sure you will see that and you might be, one of them could be a county. And, uh, you may ask yourself, why did they not use the money allocated for development? Some had spent less than 50%, some 45%, a little better was 45%. It's not that they spent 80%, 90%, no. There are some which were closer, but they are not. So resources available. So one of the things you want to ask yourself in evaluation is well, the resources allocated, were they used to bring well to, to achieve the objectives? Or are they not? Events, the events in the external environment occurring and dissipated, were they uh, handled in the expected manner? For example, when you talk about the current event today, which is a sad situation, is the impact of COVID-19. Companies, businesses are shrinking and some have closed shop and some will never open. Some rebound. They are already planning in terms of rebounding. Resilience, they talk about business resilience. We had a talk last week, uh, uh, this Malimu was one of the guests, the speakers, about business resilience COVID uh, post-COVID-19. I talked about it, what companies and business should be doing. Maybe I'll share that sometime. But what should the companies be doing, you know, thinking about? So you are trying to evaluate and make decisions. So in this case, you are looking at resources of the events that are in the environment, and then long-term and short-term goals are being met. Are we meeting them? If we said we are producing 10,000 units in the first year, we are working right now at 6,000. Now, when we move towards the end of the year, are we making, are we producing that money? Is it available? Are we producing it? The units, the resource, the services, the products, if it's expansion, how far are we? The long-term and short-term goals. Long-term, of course, is to achieve our 100%, but short-term, the immediate ones. How are we doing? 
on a yearly basis. If we are doing year two now, we should be two fifths uh-huh. of the process. Two fifths, which is we should be doing at forty percent now, forty percent of hundred, forty percent compared to the total. These are things that come in when you talk about evaluation. Now, if I may pause for a minute, then the in, uh, strategy implemented and are at risk are on the right track. Are they on the right track? What are the long term? Are we meeting long term and short term? Are the events external? Are they affecting us to what extent? Adequacy of resources? Are they being adequate? Are they adequate or not? Are they resources will never be adequate? By the way, with this kind of COVID nineteen, we find that budgets have been cut back. Budgets have been reduced. Why? Because you are looking at uh, operations are now less, resources are lower, and we're looking at how best can we move. And then whether implement a strategy are making decisions, so the right decision. So these are the benefits of strategic evaluation. We are looking at back and saying, have we achieved? Are we on the right track? If not, it means changing tact. This strategy cannot work. If we were to expand to 10 locations in 2020, I can tell you even doing one or two will be the better will be better. Because now the resources are not available and we have challenges to go along. <laughs> Okay, now, as we look at uh, the necessity of strategic evaluation and control system again, the evaluation process alerts the implementers to an unexpected event in the above issues. Yes, it does. It's like a signal. Monitoring would signal. Evaluation as you do it quarterly or periodically, yeah, it will tell you where you are. I should have mentioned that evaluation is done uh, periodically, i.e. quarterly, uh, half yearly, yearly, half uh, halfway the period if it's a five-year program, midterm, you talk about midterm evaluation, and then three-quarter way, and then summative evaluation, which is the end, summative evaluation. Your examinations are basically summative, the end of semester exams are summative. KCSE is a summative exam for all the four years. Primary is a very interesting one. It used to be any anyway, this changing. <laughs> yeah, thank God. Because from standard one, all to stand eight years, you are examined in standard eight. It's a summative evaluation to look at all that was done from primary. But now they're broken into chunks in four, four years and so on. And this is now with the competency-based learning, it has changed it. To look at always continuous monitoring and periodical evaluation to ensure that you are on the right track. So companies that do the same, they do the evaluation, thus they make the corrective action either to get back to the track or change tact or make changes in the relevant aspects. Sometimes you are going to expand, you have hired people, now expansion is not coming, you have to redeploy those people. Or you are buying equipment you are budgeted for, you may not buy that equipment. Or you may have to change because of new changes the technology, you are not buying that type of manual equipment, semi-automated, but you want to have fully automated equipment. These are things that decisions that are made all the time. Do we hire new workers? Do we add a new shift? What do we do? I gave an example of a factory, tea factory called Chabo, Chabo, Chabo Tea Factory in the uh, Paraton area. And they were adding a new line of production of tea. You know, they had one line of production of tea from green tea all the way to tea that is already packaged, uh, um, packaged for the, for, the, for the use. And they were adding a new line. Many organizations do the same thing. They can add a new line, new transport system. If you are operating a, a picky picky, uh, this border border, you may add another one or move upgrade to whatever to talk to. This is based on evaluation. How are you doing? A restaurant, for example, if they have been offering standard meals, they realize that what they need to do here is customers are asking for different menus, exotic menus, and things like those. So they are evaluating, asking customers, tell us, give us feedback so we improve. Same thing with the US in the university here. We ask you also to give us feedback. At the end of class, Malimo many times asks you, we should be asking you, how are we doing? Even midway, how are we doing? Are we communicating or am I talking to myself? Are there issues we don't discuss that I'm passing that we need to discuss and so on? So with that, at that point, is there any other reason? Is there any other uh, uh, reason of evaluation? Give us any other any additional benefit of evaluation, of evaluating the strategic plan.
because any 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 additional now when you talk about a strategic plan here we talked about strategic plan of companies and organizations you also have your own strategic plan by the way you have a plan that's why you are here in university and i'm sure you're planned what do you do after university five years uh, down the road what will you be doing you may have those kind of plans but anyway let's talk about a company when i talk of your plan i talk about a company's plan are there any other additional benefits this we've talked about alas implementers to ensure that the unexpected issues uh, change can occur because of that and earlier on we mentioned about these other ones implementers on the right track short-term goals being achieved external environment how is external environment analysis continuous analysis what's happening resources being used are they adequate and then whether implementer strategy are making decisions consistent with the plan, organization plan are decisions made are they consistent with our plan because there are policies that guide decision hiring what type of people to hire how do you hire those people resources financial how is the finances managed so on. anybody uh, i see to very to very faith yes to very high to very how are you Faith, how are you? Oh, she can see, I can see in the background. Then if you are not responding, please, you can mute, eh? Right. Let's get any other. Can we get some responses here, please? Yeah. What is any other benefit of evaluation? You can check of general evaluation, or you can also talk of strategic evaluation. What are the benefits are there, additional benefits? Hmm. Anybody? <laughs> Yes, Mutinia Merian. Want to say something? Hello. Are we together? Mm. Right, I see Jacqueline Moke. It allows organizations to be proactive rather than excellent. It's proactivity that is that's crucial here. You know, if you are prepared, if you have been a girl guide or a scout, they say be prepared, PB. That is what that's your motto, PP. Be prepared. Don't react. Reaction tendencies tend to be more expensive than being proactive, anticipating. Proactivity really means anticipating. What if, as a question you always ask yourself, is that a sense of direction? Yes. Where are you going? Increases personal efficient, operational efficiency, right? Because if I know I'm going to be evaluated, even many people, uh, because they are going to be evaluated, they want to do things perfect, right? I mean, they want to really make sure that they do it out well. If they know there's no evaluation, uh, it's like examinations. If you know that you're not being examined, people just sit and stay away even from class. They don't even turn to their notes. I remember that. Many students do that. Just sit around and relax, uh, listening with one ear and the other ear. You know? But you say you're going to be examined. This topic's coming. Yeah, you will be evaluated on this. You find people are very busy writing notes and ensuring that they get every point. So every point we are discussing, Malim discussing, you'll be examined. So make sure that you are there. You are listening and contributing. We also examine your contribution, by the way. So make sure that you contribute. If you have never contributed in these uh, uh, discussions, in this uh, blended learning, please ensure you say something. Yes, I can see here, evaluation helps increase market share, right? You can take business more Europe. Yeah, Felicitas Mbogo. Let's see Felicitas. Evaluation identify talent. Exactly. You can identify talent, carrying out regular job evaluation helps too. Yes, regular job evaluation evaluation. You want to see that you have people who have talent and you have not tapped them. Helps increase market share. Yes, it does continue. Yes, you need to say a little more there. But it you can understand, you can increase market share because you have known customers what they want that's true going around that direction and profitability evaluation is decision making maintains and keeps you on a competitive edge yes it does result into that because you see what uh, the other people are doing just like we are also compare ourselves with other universities what are they doing that we are not doing better or what we are not doing so we can improve okay uh yes helps organizations to be on their toes on changes in the line of business therefore allowing them to incorporate changes of government yeah Organization uh, to it changes line of business. What changes are there that you need? Otherwise, if there's no evaluation, people just see do things the usual way. Yeah, uh, not caring. Uh, the complacence comes in and the sloppishness comes in. But you want to be better. You want to be on top of things. That's why evaluation is necessary. Helps organization to be on their toes and so on and so forth. Yes. See more here. Emmanuel said something. Emmanuel, I can see there. Yeah, Emmanuel helps in term, long term survival of the business, Richard improvement, the company, intelligence. Uh, Tieno helps in identifying the opportunities. Freddie Palais, evaluation enhances the work division and specification. Yes, 
helps in assessment how well the business is doing, evaluation helps in budget estimation and reduce waste, yes. Jacqueline Marley evaluation helps in assessing the strengths, yes, sort analysis, more or less, yeah, which is good. Kazi Kazi allows the organization to be at par for the changes in the industry. Yemgeno, it helps to assess whether the decisions match the intended strategy requirement. Yeah. All these are actually reasons why or benefits of evaluation. Many others I can see people typing, evaluation helps the company to know the direction they are going. Mm. Because you look at, am I on the right track? Are we doing well? Can we expand north or south or east or west or just around our location centrally? What do we do? So it gives you that when you look at how you are doing. And even sales, you can tell your sales from this region are more than from this region. So I have a branch there. Why not start a branch there? Then these are the region that has less. Or we go there where there's less so that we can, we can attract people, whichever philosophy you want to use, and so on. So this evaluation is necessary in all areas you can see that necessary in all areas evaluating yourself also how you are performing is crucial and how we as an institution are doing is also crucial for our long-term survival otherwise you'll bury your head in the sand you don't want to be related and at the end of it all there'll be no more sun to bury your head in and you disappear you become a dinosaur now evaluation the insist you talked about them here any others anybody else want to say something grab the mic and say something. Let me take a little water. Mm. Any others? Or do or Alan, have you said something? Alan, yes, evaluation is decision making. And this keeps you in competitive ever. Alan, do you want to say something more about your response here? You said evaluation is decision making, and you want to expand on that, Alan? Grab your mic if you are nearby. Alan, grab your mic. And uh, say something about your response. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, yeah. Uh, evaluation, evaluation helps the, the, helps the company maintain maintain its, its profitability, and also it maintains it to be competitive. So when when there is good strategy, everything will be will be will be implemented. Good, good. Thank you very much. Alan, I want to get somebody by the name Freddy Palay. Freddy Palay. Are you with us? Fred, evaluation chances, what? Enhances work division and specification. You want to expand on that, Palay? Yeah. Yes. I'm there, sir. Okay. Yes, go ahead. I was, I was meaning that uh, uh, through evaluation of a strategy, a uh, company can also identify the best talents and find out where to place, where somebody is well talented in. And from that, it will, uh, it will be beneficial to a company. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much, Palay. Let's get somebody by the name Mbuthi Amos. Evaluation helps the company to know the direction they are heading to. Yes, Mbuthi Amos, are we together? Mbuthi Amos. Hello, Mbuthi Amos. Are we there? Hmm. We may not be getting Mbuthi Amos. Let's get somebody else. Mbuthi Amos seems to be far. Anybody else want to say something? Please, let me give you an opportunity. There's a Malimu selected uh, selection. What about others? Mm. Felicitas Mbogo. Yes, Felicitas Mbogo. Are we there? Felicitas. Felicitas Mbogo. If not, Felicitas not there. Felicitas Mbogo evaluation identifies talent. Yes. Mm -hmm. And we get. Uh, Emmanuel Nge teach long term survival. Yes. Ngudi Lillian, are you on the line? Ngudi Lillian. Ngudi Lillian. Anybody, please. Let's get Irene then. Irene Richard, can you say something? It, has, it enhances improvement in the economy, in the company, intelligence oneself, you know, oneself, and on. Uh, as well okay yes 
You ready? Are we together? Yes. yes. Can you expand your response, please? Yes. Okay. Through strategy evaluation. Yeah. It will assist in, in improving the company so, mm -hmm. so that whichever blunders or mistakes that are made through evaluation, they will be able to note down so as to get mm -hmm. to improve the company so that to mm -hmm. even enhance more customers. Yeah, ETC. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> it is the end of thing capacity. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, right. Okay, let's get a lady. We have not got <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Yeah, just a joking. Yes, let's get one of the ladies. Just for guys, we've got guys. Let's get one of the ladies. The Jacqueline Ma Mano Chemgeno. Any of the ladies here, please? Chemgeno, are you here? Vivian, Vivian, are you there? Vivian, are you there? Okay, Rostondop is ready. He wants to rescue the ladies. Yes, Rostondop. <laughs> yes, uh, through strategic evaluation, as mm -hmm. I had indicated in my point that when we evaluate a company, we are able yes. to know the changes that is happening in our industry because the environment is dynamic. So if we yes. are able to be able to get the changes, in the next time we'll be able to incorporate the changes thereby giving us a competitive advantage over okay. other companies. Okay. Yes. yes, you can know the changes. Yes, thank you very much, Rostondo. Now, there was another little one to come along. Is it Jemgeno or was it uh, Jacqueline? Yes? Any of the two is can grab the mic faster, yes? Jacqueline? Jacqueline? It can also, it can also, it can also do what? Yes. <laughs> you said it from your answer, helps in assessing the strength and we can, can you want to say more about that? Yes, Jacqueline, say more about that. Hello? It can Jacqueline, be an addition. It can be an yes. addition mm -hmm. that helps stakeholders develop a realistic timeline for when the program will be mm -hmm. ready for evaluation. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. We wanted you to say something about assessing strengths and weaknesses, but you have said it differently. That's okay. Yes, Regina Karonji gives the company a drive and focus. Regina, where are you? Can you tell us a little more on that? Regina? Regina Karonji? Regina Karonji? Manager, Madam Regina Karonji. Wow. Regina is not, has not put on her mic. We hope others have answered uh, on behalf of them. Right. You know, companies will always derive as many, many uh, uh, benefits from evaluation. Just getting the confidence to know how you are doing and how your competitors are doing and how your strategy of beating them, if I may use that term, beating them are doing. That's what it is. You need the information. They say information is power. And once you have the right information, then you can make the right decisions. Because what you'll do here is you can beat the competitors. You can go there and beat the path. That ego that was flying is flying on its own. It knows there's no challenger, nobody to challenge it because there's no birds around. So by evaluating, by looking at who else is actually coming and following or am I following, that makes your company do very well. So it gives you direction, vision, is your strength and weaknesses, what others are doing better than you are doing, and you can improve what the customers want. You know, those are things that come in. What do the what's the market like? How are other companies reacting? You know, all that is information you gain and it's research. Based on research, you remember we did uh, we talked about research, market research, and research for even for, for your strategic plan. And it's continuous because the world is not sitting down, it's running. 
and companies are also not sitting down, but they are running to outwit each other to make sure that they are doing better. You find about the tenders, for example. Each year, companies flow the big tenders. These are government tenders. These are lucrative tenders. I'm not saying, uh, in a way, but government is a big spender because through taxpayers' money, the general revenue, they talk about three trillion or six one point something trillion uh, shillings out of the budget that's no company one company master so the company government has a lot of uh expenditure in terms of building infrastructure and so on so if your company is doing well your construction you want to do better you want to win those tenders not only within the local county but also nationally so you are competing you are evaluating you can evaluate how our strategies of of uh, bidding and writing and uh, doing our work, strategy of expanding our business. If we are working on in Kiambu County, for example, how do we want to reach to other five counties next year or in five years' time? We want to reach another 10 counties in terms of our business to generate more revenue, more sales, and do better. So your strategy, you, you evaluate, how are we doing first year anyway? How are we doing second year? Are we moving towards that or we change tack? So it's important for a company to so high like that ego to continuously monitor and evaluate the performance as we go along we talked about necessities here the next item here that i'm bringing on board is a question on requirements for effective strategic evaluation system there must be some direction in terms of uh what are these uh, requirements how do i reach there not requirements what are the necessity necessary the, the, the infrastructure needed and also the environment to do effective strategic evaluation. What is it? A strategy evaluation system, in order to be effective and successful, must meet certain requirements. If you are going to do it, there are certain requirements, certain standards, known across the board. There are standards. These requirements are characteristic of an effective evaluation system. So when you're talking of evaluation, we said first of all, it is a process. And if it's a process, it's a system. The way you do, you run from the beginning to the end of continuous monitoring and evaluating your performance. As long as the company is running and is competitive, it will continue to evaluate its processes to ensure that it is a competitive company. We are there. I use the education sector and the university for particular, in particular, that universities continue advertising. We are there, you know, we are the oldest university. We are the technology university. We are the first, fast growing, largest private university. We are a university boasting of giving our students an opportunity to invent themselves. You know, we, we, we talk of these things to ensure that we remain there. So, but if we are going to evaluate ourselves, what are some of the things that we need as requirement? Number one, economical. The activities related to evaluation of strategy must be economical. That means the activities are not going, you're not going to spend more on evaluation than what was spent in the activity itself. If they are not, of course, effective, wastage would creep in, a balance needs to be maintained in obtaining information, not too much or too little. Very often, too much data and too many controls do not harm the, that, that good. Okay. What it's saying here is that the pros must be economical. If you're going to have a system of monitoring and evaluation, it must be economical. You remember in some of the organizations, there's feedback from clients. There's always a box there. They call it an anonymous vote for any complaints. It's our system of evaluation. It's economical. Because there's a box there, put there, and there are papers there. People just fill in, and there's a form, fill in and drop in there. It's very, very cheap. It doesn't require anything. A box there, pen, and a paper so that people can fill. And information, please, write us. Before you leave our organization, tell us how we are doing so that we can improve. Tell customers like that. And they'll pick the form. They'll fill it very quickly. Make it easy also. Is check boxes. Yeah, our well, service is good. Yes. Do we serve with a smile? Yes. Would you do business again with us? Yes. Would you refer somebody else? Yes or no? You know, quick, quick. And that is our way of evaluation. They call them happy sheets. Evaluation. Customers exit, you know, and so on. Students, you evaluate as faculty how we are doing. You do monitoring and evaluation. Although it's you do this evaluation in terms of how my limb is doing, say that you're spending so much time or little time or no notes or whatever. You tell us this and we read them and we improve these things. 
evaluation is there. We also evaluate you in performance. Give you tests and cuts. How are you doing your cuts? You can also evaluate. Companies do evaluation and it must be economical. It should not be exorbitant in terms of taking more resources than actually uh, would be spent elsewhere. Meaningful. It must be meaningful too. The strategy evaluation activities must be meaningful in the sense that they have to be related to specific objectives that can suit the strategy. Yes, meaningful and focused. It must be meaningful. What information you are getting is going to be useful and it only relates to what I want to. If the question of evaluating our reception at the desk, at the reception desk, the front office, we now call it front office. How are our services at the front office? I can go deep there. Did you get the information required? Uh, were there any assistance you received? Was it the room or was it warm enough or very cold or something? Were you? No, you can dig a lot into the reception area. You can also go into the entire university, the schools or the departments. How is the school doing? The head of the department, the dean, are they serving you? The faculty, the lecturers teaching you? Are they giving you the right information? Are they available on time? All those evaluating. It should be meaningful because we need information to improve. Companies need information to support customers. Many times, restaurants have been to a number of restaurants, a uh, number of them, and at the end, they ask you before you leave, uh, the supervisor will come and say, Sir, how are you? How, was, how did you find our meal? How do you find our service? Please let us know. And uh, sometimes they have a checklist there. You give your paper there, you feel very quickly. Please help us to know how we are doing so that we can serve you better. Meaningful information. Not just for the sake of fulfilling a requirement that you must have this because a regulating agency wants to know. It's information that is meaningful. Economical is not going to cost much. You know, it is meaningful. It has the information you want. Sometimes they talk about relevance, valid. Is the information relevant? Yeah, slide eight there. It took long to come. Yeah, requirement effective. Yeah, so number three, providing useful information. Is the information useful? That's a characteristic of evaluation system. The information collected through evaluation must be useful. Redundant information is useless to managers and time wasting. I must say that. It must be useful. I need information to know how my customers are doing. The cook knows to know, needs to know the chef. <laughs> chef. Chef needs to know whether the menu was good because he's the head of the menu. The waiter is uh, on the other hand. The supervisor of the waiters will want to know how they have done. Did the customers, were they satisfied? Were we prompt in our service? Were we courteous in our, our, our communication? Those are things they look at if you're zeroing in. So the information provided must be useful to the people in the waiting area. The other information is to the chef and his team. The other information could be administration. So there must be specific and must be able to meet the needs that provide the useful information for the needs of the organization. For decision making, if customers are complaining, there's a lot of noise here. You know, it's not comfortable. There's need to write there. It's information that is useful. Because you can now reduce the noise if you are near construction site. Maybe you should find a way of uh, cushioning, putting acoustics, temporary acoustics in your, your restaurant or doing something. You know, the meals took longer to be served. After I placed an order, I waited for another half an hour. First of all, I had waited for 10 minutes before the waiter came to talk to me, to take my order. Then they were rude because they didn't, they just walked casually, you know, not even carrying the menu until I asked for it. Then they brought the menu and they were not careful. They were not helpful enough to tell me, sir or madam, this is a menu. And uh, can you try today's menu? This, I mean, selling it. They're also selling. They're not just sitting there throwing the menu to you and you sit there and you, you now look at uh, well, you know, the, some languages used in uh, restaurants, restaurant, those of you in restaurant and doing a lot of doing hospitality. The language there is uh, interesting. Yeah? You get the terms like Stroganov and others, many others. Uh, so so the, the, you see, you need somebody to help you. Somebody sits with you, says, this is our menu. Any question, please? And you ask which one. I want the fastest meal here that I can get and it's fresh. Oh, try this one. This is our starter and that one and that one. They will be there helping you. What they're trying is the information you get from the customers. Why you served well? Why are waiters happy? Did they help you? This information will be useful to improve in the area of waiting and for services. Provide timely information. If you provide information next year that was required now, it's not timely. The evaluation system should be established in such a way that it provides almost real time information. Real time. How am I doing? Very quickly, yes, you are doing well or you are not doing well. Rather than waiting, how am I doing? And I wait for two, three, four days to get that answer. If you, we are doing well, let's keep it up. Or let's change this to make it better. 
providing true picture of events. Yes, there's no cooking of the story, but uh, cooking, uh, quote unquote, uh, no mixing up uh, conjecture or whatever you want to please the person who didn't even know, it must give the true picture. We are not doing well here, sir. The country is not doing very well in terms of containing COVID-19. Not telling the president, I'm mean, I mean the president. Not telling the president, everything is okay, Mr. President. You know, all is okay. We can ease the, 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 these uh, confinements and things like that. But really, they're not easy. You are pleasing him, but he knows more. And uh, it will be a shame to you if you don't get him from the true picture, then to give the true picture. If the data collector does not give the true picture, then it's not worth it. It's not even worth the paper written on it. But you must give true picture for what? Decision making. Because we need real time. If the customers down there are unhappy with the new arrangement, uh, then that information is flow very quick to top management to make decision. The new arrangement is what? You know, could be the seating arrangement or could be whatever. So whatever information is gathered must be give true picture and must be acted upon. I think that would be the next one or something like that. Must be acted upon to improve. Hmm. Being directed toward right, right persons. Yes, the strategy evaluation system should be directed to the right person. Yeah, if it's automated, it must go to the desk of the person concerned. As people fill in the forms or discuss online or they're keyed in, at the end of it, all that information is available for decision making. Yeah, direct right person. Not going around is directed to marketing and it's supposed to be HR matter or vice versa. Yeah. Being elaborate and detailed, yes. The requirement is that when you do this system, you must be uh, elaborate and detailed. This reminds me of a SGS. You know, if you are ISO certified company, you'll be having these monitoring uh, visits and evaluation. They want to see how you are doing in implementing what you promise you will do. Talked about ISO certification. Truly, if it's an ISO certification, it must keep up to date. Renewals, they have a they have a reinspection and so on. So again, to the right person being elaborate and detailed enough to give the information needed. Mm. Strategy evaluation process. Before we do that, I want to go back here a little bit. Mm. Now, requirements of effective. What else would you think? What else? What else would you just as regards the effectiveness? Effectiveness of strategy evaluation evaluation huh? what else would you suggest What else would you suggest as regards the effectiveness of strategy evaluation? We talked about evalu uh, uh, effectiveness. And here we are. Requirements for effective strategy. We started with economical, not spending much resources on it. Spending what's minimum. It must be meaningful. It must show that we are doing very well. The information that is relevant is relevant. It can be applied immediately. Then we talk about provide useful info. It must be useful hmm, for quality decision making. It must provide time. It must be timely, so that it's not waiting. So that at the end of the day, you are not just still waiting for evaluation two days later. Because there are certain things that may require urgent implementation. Then provide true picture of events. Yes, true picture. It must give you a true picture of what's happening. You know, it's part of research. Research is searching for the truth, and the truth is elusive and truth is is bitter and truth will set you free so tell the truth about what's happening don't be the political way of populist where you say oh everything's okay you know supervisor all oh, is all right when things are not all right when they lift and check oh my goodness that's what happens to politicians many times they say left and right these things are okay they will always talk like that nevertheless 
being directed towards the right persons, the right persons they want to answer it. If it's online, it must be clear, it's not pass through many hands. Mm -hmm. Being elaborate and detailed. Yes, it must be elaborate and detailed. Right. So as we look at those, can we uh, suggest I've said I've, I've asked the question here. Yep, yep, yep. Suggest said what else? Rostando, the strategy should be easy to understand by all. Yes, it must not be hidden. When we took a devaluation, we look at devaluation, it must be hidden to the few, either HR or some office that is concerned, but it should be clear and open to everyone. So that's very good. Stand up. Yeah, specific and focus. Yes, don't just hit there, like you're shooting in the open. Make sure you aim. Uh -huh. It must be what? should be effective. What do you mean effective, Chris? You want to say more about that, Chris? Yes. Chris, what is effective? Maybe you are thinking more. Must be pre precise and effective. Yes, again, I can see you want say the same thing. What do you mean by effective here? It must be effective. And to ask that question. Should be accommodative, Karunji, yes. Everyone should actually do, understand, yes, the world should be simple and smart, yes. And the study should be precise, understood, and empirical, empirical or practical. Based on research, of course, must be precise. And, yeah. We talk about effective strategies. What do you mean by effective? What do you mean by effective? Ask a question here. What do you mean by effective? Yeah. Somebody tell us what is effective. And a number of you have used the word effective, effective. What is this effective? Anybody? No. Yes. Rasanda, yes. I think being effective means mm -hmm. that you to carry out a, an evaluation, it should it should meet our expectations. That is whatever mm -hmm. we do and carry it out, it will help us mm -hmm. meet the expectation we had. Therefore, we term, is, uh, we term that as effective. It was able to solve or meet our expectation. Therefore, it, is, mm -hmm. it was an effective mm -hmm. method. Mm -hmm. It was an effective method. And then you add the efficient, isn't it? Efficiency means it was... It was done precisely as expected. So I see here efficiency. I can see a few people. Thank you very much, Rostando. Thank you very much. Yes, I can see a ja Jacqueline. Is that Josephine or Jacqueline? I would yes. say effectiveness yes. would mean. Mm -hmm. Hello? Yes, we are there with you. You would mean yes, how there. you examine how it links objectives to the way you plan to achieve them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. It makes it, uh, yeah, examine links, objectives, and showing that it is done as expected. So if you talk of, God forbid, here, surgery, you're having pain, maybe on your leg somewhere, the ankle, and you in medication on...
Zima radio. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, sorry for that. I had a problem with my fiber. It had all the bundles, yes, but uh, I don't know what happened. Uh -huh. Then the message. Sorry for the hitch. Let go hitch. Let go. Let go hitch. Sorry for the technical hit, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we were. Hi, are we together now? Hello. Yeah. Hello. Good. I, I, my fiber, I use fiber. Uh, the problem was 
it, they had bundled, but I don't know what was happening. Maybe it was just a cough that affected it. That was no problem. It's not cough. Now, we are back here as we are looking at uh, the effectiveness. When we talk of effectiveness of a strategy or effectiveness of an activity, what it does really is it produces the results. So the effectiveness of strategic evaluation system is that it has to produce the results. For an effective one, it has to produce results which will make you now move to the next level. I want to move to strategic evaluation process. And this process here, I'll touch a number of things here about the process. The, we said the evaluation as an exercise a process and is done periodically. And for strategy, evaluation is also a process and there are certain things that we look at when we evaluate our processes. And so, the evidence of strategy evaluation lies in the capacity to coordinate the tasks performed by managers, groups, departments. Look at a place like a company you are in for your attachment. Let me use that away from home. And look at the various, look at the company profile. Maybe it's a registered company. It has uh, workers, it has the top management, the middle level management, it has the uh, full supervisors and you have the workers. Or it could be a small company, only the management and the workers. So when you are looking at that and you are, uh, you are trying to look at, you have to look at the whole system. So the, the importance
again challenge again ladies and gentlemen i think they should be should be back again we're normal right so we're talking about uh, we're talking about uh, start sharing back there the web camera we're talking about the process of evaluation and the process of evaluation as we can see here it begins with the best reviewing where beginning you measure the performance you analyze the gap you take corrective action very necessary in any organization it's a standard process and you can see it here pictorially also by this illustration reviewing your basis the basis for what do you want the base of your strategy what is your strategy about what are the objectives what did you intend to achieve uh, by this time or by next year this time or by the third year that's time or by the fifth year this time so you look at those basic standards and then of course periodically you are measuring now the performance how are we doing quarter let's say after four months if you're having five-year period five-year period it means there are 20 quarters if i may use that language so there are quarters quarterly means every four months every three months three months in a year so if you have chunks of three months per year five times it means there are 20 of them yeah because there are four in a year so so you look at the first quarter how are we doing and you can see you can measure the difference yes we have made we have achieved let's say 100 percent right then come second quarter which is half year how are we doing half year again half year you look at it yes we've done three quarters of what we expected so what's the variance 25 percent we wasn't achieved now, what are the reasons? You know, that's when you are analyzing, analyzing any deviations. If it is bang on, they might, the analysis will show there's no the, the, the variance, zero. So you continue in the same direction. Or you may have this, you may have, okay, if there's no variance, it means your standards, your basis were low. If you are saying want to make only 10%, and here the market could give you up to 15, 20%, and you make 20%, then you may need to device you are basis again that okay based on our projections we undervalued our performance well so in that case the variance analyzed and then the corrective action corrective action is the one either we continue the direction we are going or we need to change the tact in terms of bringing aboard maybe new a new supplier supplies of different raw materials now or we bring in a new uh, machine or human resource we hire more people we hire experienced managers in this area those are things that you may want to do in corrective action that means we are continuing with um uh, with the monitoring and evaluation and as you do that basically what's happening is that you are making decisions at every level and you review the basis reviewing where you are in terms of strength and weakness as well as external opportunities and threats form the basis for strategy you did the strategy based on SWOT analysis and you made decisions of what you want to do so you look at this the opportunity threat strength and weakness are hot likely are not likely to be remain valid or for a long time are not, not hot but are not likely to remain valid for a long time yeah they are not they are changing your strength and weakness yes you will so these are the basis when you made the decision okay then a review would reveal how competitors competitors have reacted to the farm strategies how are competitors how do they react to our strategies how competitors have changed their strategies in response of our company strategies, where the strength and weaknesses have changed, whether you have opportunities by now have emerged and new, new threats have surfaced, and above all, whether the already identified opportunities, threats, strengths, and weaknesses are still as they were at the time of SWOT analysis. This is a whole area that you, as the evaluator, as you evaluate, the performance of your strategy has to look at how have the competitors reacted for example competitors you can't control them and control the factor when they see you have lowered your prices they say by 10 shillings they will lower it by 15 shillings or by 12 shillings just to provoke you you've done yours by 10 you think it's a good chunk you know customers will now come and flock and so on the competitors are listening oh you're clever eh? what we'll do is we'll also show you that we are cleverer 
they, re they reduce theirs by 10, by 12 or 13 shillings. 12 first, be conservative. They are 12. And that difference of two shillings will move customers, will make them loyal. Oh, yeah. You are giving us 10? Our own, our own company, our own, the, 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 our own supply gives us a 12. So it's better continue. You know, the wars can be the price wars. You hear about price wars this is in marketing. Price wars come because of that. So we're saying, how are the competitors reacting? Have they changed their tact? If they change, they're saying they're offering now free, uh, whatever, distribution of this product because they've seen you are distributed, but they say free, even additional. We give you additional. You have to think about the strategy, how to do that. And then, of course, where the strength and weakness are changed, have they anything changed about uh, your, your situation? And this will also uh, act as a basis for, for evaluation of strategy. Then, of course, the other one mentioned here is it may happen that effective strategy has been chosen or strategy has been implemented very poorly. Yeah, implementation. First of all, is are we on the right track? Yes. Nothing has changed. Nothing has changed. Can we change differently a little bit, be better? And then, what about the implementation bit of it? Many government projects, for example, are good, well designed, well developed, but the implementation is very poor. Any, including Kasi Kwavijana. Kasi Kwavijana was a designer, good designer, a strategy to create employment and distribute incomes, you know, in, in good wealth, revenue to the individuals, including Yapa Waze, Pesa Kwa, his old Waze's money. The one that they give for the, they call it the transfer, cash transfer program. Well done. But in the papers the other day, what happened? In one of the counties, I can't hide Bungoma, it was there. That, that uh, Bungoma East, uh, the money that is meant for the Wazes, the old Wazes, is siphoned between the bank clerks, the officers concerned, and I think another party. So that this money is transferred. If people are supposed to get money in location A. They would move this money to another location C and tell the fellow, when it's not here, go to location C. When they go to location C, that told location C, they, this money is not here. Go back. So there was this, you know, they are not patient to go, be shuttled between one location and another. So what happens? That money ends in the pockets of the bank uh, clerks and the managers concerned. And those was this continue going home frustrated because this implementation, I mean, because they have not got their money. Implementation is very poor. Um, cases like those uh, where people have complained, said, look, we are shuttled between one office and another, and this is where we registered. So implementation is poor. Implementation of programs and so on. The good thing with the private sector is that there's a constant mon monitoring to ensure that you don't waste resources and so on. So this, uh, again here, you're looking at implementation. The review helps in discovering these changes. When you review, you look at the changes. New policies, government policies, are they there? Have prohibited the company from achieving the objectives. Is and Are the policies there that are going to affect us? If policies of transport, for example, government policies of transport, if you are running a matatu, matatus, these are the public vehicles, and they are told you must, number one, test your drivers, must have a certificate neg showing negative results. And then sanitize your vehicle should be sanitized your vehicle should be sanitized number three then of course the seating arrangement instead of the 14 seater which was carrying 14 15 people you only need to you only carry eight people what does that mean it means you configure your seats some have already configured but you see what does it mean running costs you know at the old price will not accommodate that half uh, consideration or that reduced capacity, which means the other cost must be borne by the other passengers. And that's true. That's what happens when you're traveling these days, these matatus, um, told you pay double because there's an extra seat next to you. So, and it's not you who decided, but uh, these are regulations, but the entrepreneurs, uh, the owners take, the company owners take their own route to implement and uh, to see the implementation certain policy so in this case again you're talking about ineffective implementation which may affect policies and may affect the way uh, activities are run and hence even the your strategic strategy evaluation even strategic plan maybe in jeopardy because you can't evaluate effectively and so on what does 
reviewing uh, evaluation does it also helps discovering the any changes in the economy external changes internal changes some of the basis for for strategic evaluation for strategy evaluation I'm coming back here a little bit a little bit there mm, reviewing business uh, my window ahead a little bit back here yeah we are there Do we move to the stages review this basis uh measure analyze variance feedback and then as you move on you know internal strength you have to look at how you are doing internally and uh, they may have changed external you look at the external competitors and look at what strategies are you going to achieve to use in terms of implementing your strategic evaluation then it may happen that if an effective strategy has been chosen or strategy has been implemented by poorly implementation we talked about poor implementation and review helps and so the review you of this helps to identify the gaps and be able to do them. How do we measure organizational performance? Because that's what's number two. After the strategy, you measure. How do you measure? And there are a number of things here mentioned. The second component or activity of the strategy evaluation framework is a measurement of organizational performance. How do we measure organizational performance? Maybe I should pose that question here. How do we measure organizational performance? How in your opinion do we measure organizational performance how do we in your opinion or from the company or from the organization which you are familiar with hmm? you are familiar with I'm just trying to do something as shortly shortly here organization mm -hmm. measure their performance I want you to give us some point how in your opinion we measure organizational performance Oh, how, in your opinion, do we measure organizational performance? Or from the organization you are familiar with, including uh, maybe that of where you did attachment, or yes, attachment, how do they measure their organizational performance? May I get some views here? Because you're talking of measuring organizational performance. That was number two. If I may take us back here, let's move back back there the back there uh -huh. where we are doing is this can we hear from you what specifically do they use to measure their performance because you have a strategy they have strategy they are implementing of course if they are strategy they are implementing how do they measure organizational performance in terms of those strategies I see answers here. Roston is the first one through the first uh, that through sales capacity that is revenue expenditure. Uh -huh. Yes, you are talking of two things: revenue and how the sales capacity. That's what you said. Uh, the sales capacity, the sales. In terms of look at sales from projected sales to actual sales, and you can also you have also talked about revenue. Yeah, revenue. Uh, revenue expenditure. Also, you look at expenditure. That's a possibility. Yes, that's how you measure. Felicitas. Oh, we're talking about. Okay, I see here. Jacqueline. Jacqueline says what? Set the performance indicators and making sure that they implemented in the across the country. Now, what are those, Jacqueline? It's good for you to say indicators like which ones? KPIs. I know can you can performance. What are some of them? I said specifically. Maybe I didn't say that. In your opinion, do we? How do we measure? Can you be specific a little bit here? Yes, as you come, let's see, let's get some of others. Or do they through its expansion and growth? Yes. How do we measure? Do we have any metrics? And we say percentage growth, or can we say growth by what? We have a look at profits gained, amount of sales, customers. Yes. But later you're talking about the statistics. Profits gained and so on. Shadrach crew. Yes. Setting goals and achievements. That should be met at the end of uh, what goals are they giving you? You would have said goals like growing sales, growing our 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 
yes, our revenue, uh, new products. Maybe that's just a kind of things when you talk about goals. Lemayan, thank you, Lemayan, through productivity. Yes, how do you measure productivity? That's a question I'm raising. You talk about productivity. How do we measure it? Uh -huh. Chris Mulogosi, organization performance can be measured by achievement of goals and yeah, profit maximization, meeting the needs. Of, yeah, if you use specifics, it will be very good. These are all good answers, but they could be more specific. Eh? Use of stock evaluation. Yeah, Karonji, stock evaluation. Want to say something more? Keep chumba, I see here. Most responses here. Number of them. Yeah. Now we keep chumba through the return on profits. Yep. Return, you can use the ROI, ROP, return on profits. ROI, really, return on investment, return on profit, okay? Productive employees. How do we measure productive employees? Chumba. It's good to talk about this, eh? Through, yeah, through the return on profits. I see Mukambi build that we can look at turn, uh, at a turn over, a turnover that sales and profit through the company's chart of sales, customer satisfaction, questionnaires. Good. Training of staff <coughs> and other what? Uh, through customer service and subject estimate of financial performance in my end productivity this is to do with value added to the product and so on right good responses excellent responses i see i see, I see people are awake thank you thank you yeah the number of this that sales and market share look at turnover and profits those are things yeah, to let through the company's chart of sales yeah all those graphs you can measure right now we are talking about here so we go ahead when we measure after measuring what do we do next there are financial metrics and there are non-financial metrics that's what it means financial profits the figures you see and then financial those one maybe customer uh, comments and things like those things that you you cannot measure uh, statistic in terms of statistics or in terms of qualitative there are qualitative ones that we can measure also so somebody said there are qualitative measures there are qualitative measures it's okay it may happen that an effective strategy has been chosen now i've looked at that we talked about in fact that's why because of it second component is a measurement that's what we're talking about managers need to compare the planned activities against the actual progress towards achieving goals yeah compare planned and against actual that is actual results are compared with the planned results I, I that's what we are all saying but in different ways you know if you are going let's say leaving this same uh, nairobi going to mombasa assume you are going to go for a holiday to mombasa and in this case you have a timeline you want to go to mombasa and be there in two days time mm. or yeah you want to go to mombasa and what you need to do here is you put together your all your resources you have checked the hotel you check the transport system which one you want to use you've checked the resources you have the money you have currently and what you need to borrow maybe to supplement all those things are done now and then when you read mombasa you want to take at least two days off just lazing yourself around in the sand and so on and so forth now COVID 19 is okay you want to be there in the beach and so on and then from there maybe you want to visit different places these are things you want to do you measure so you can measure that against the standards are the time the dates the money you want to spend the place you want to visit and and so on you can measure those ones and see how you are doing so you compare what you had planned with what the results are then the deviations are detected delayed in traveling or you spend more those are deviations evaluation is also made to individual performance so progress towards achieving these original objectives is what you're looking original not the changed ones but originally you want to go to mombasa and you want to go two days time and this is what you need to spend in terms of transport accommodation and any other incidental expenses you have while there then you come back after four days so you'll be there for about uh, uh, one week so you evaluate that companies do evaluate their performance in terms of increasing profits if that's what the goals all companies want to increase their profits they want to increase performance as we saw earlier about growth uh, growth is important if you are a growing company you'll attract suppliers you attract employees who are keen who have experience you'll be on top of things in terms of you are actually uh, uh, the blue chip company so when you are doing that as you grow then you have to measure that growth and that growth is performance and you measure it using various uh, various statistics i mean various metrics 
Then the deviations are detected. So if the things here are sales, you are using sales, or number of employees you are using, or suppliers, or volume of trade or business you are having for each supplier, all those are metrics that you can use. And the compliance, for example, with the, the regulator, you know, based on their reports that you have complied, if they do quarter reports, then you have complied, and so on. Satisfaction to your customers, yes, based on their uh, feedback directly of employees. We have done some employee index to find out about employee satisfaction, because satisfied employees, I tell you, will do marvelous things, will turn around the company. The satisfied ones will sing you the grief of companies that buy. So you want to do all these metrics. There are all things you should measure. So as you look at performing better, you use standards to measure the performance. Maybe let's compare the plan activities or goals against actual. That's actual results are compared with the plan. Then deviations are that what happened. We are not able to travel in two days' time, or you are not able to make 10% increase. You only made four or three. What was the reason? Of course, COVID-19 can be used many times by many people that you know COVID-19 affected our, our sales. You know, sales are low, business is low, we had to lay off workers. Now our sales are just dwindled to selling maybe so many of these units per day. Instead of selling thousands, we are only selling hundreds, which means we've cut down. So you look at why that deviation. Why from thousands to hundreds only? Evaluation is also made the individual performance, progress towards achieving original goals, and so on. As it is. Startup performance is a benchmark with which the actual performance is to be compared. Yes? What is your standard? The standard would be the year you had the best sales or average sales. The year where you had average sales can be a standard. That if we exceed 10 per year, then it's better than where we were. So a standard here, 10%. Or whatever percentage units you use. So this goes with the preset standards that you want to use to measure. Your own. And those standards are not set arbitrarily. They are industry in the, accepted internationally standards for measuring performance in different areas. If it is productive, like somebody talked about productivity, how do we measure worker productivity? A person clocking in at eight and clocking out at five, no matter as they produce. What, how do you measure productivity? There are challenges that you see and issues that you see. And there are issues also in measuring uh, evaluation and doing evaluation of strategy and so on. Well, managers need to compare plan, deviation is detected, and then achievement is shown so that you move towards achieving the goals. So standard performance is a benchmark, which is actual performance in the compared, uh, compared with the others. Okay. We look at um, reporting, measurement, uh, measuring organizational performance still continues. The reporting and communication system help in measuring the performance as very, very objectives must be created against which measures, measurements of performance can be done. Measurement must be done at the right time, uh, else evaluation not be meet its objectives. Measuring the performance, financial statements are like Balance sheet, profit and loss account must be prepared on an annual basis. What do we mean here? We are still talking of the metrics, the metrics in terms of performance. And the metrics here show you have to look at this, the financial statements or others which are done on yearly basis. Of course, you can do quarterly measuring, but the actual the acceptance is the yearly because you are looking at evaluating yourself after one year's activities and so on. Variable must be created and so on. Here is variable objectives must be created against the measurement. That means you are measuring certain items. You must know what you are measuring exactly. That meets international standards. Hmm. Then we talk about analyzing variance. That's the fourth, the third one, you remember. <clears throat> the first one was <clears throat> the strategies. The second one was look at the basis of strategies. The second one was looking at measurement, carrying out the measurement itself. The third item now is looking further and look at that variance. If we are saying we are producing 20 units by end of the half year, and the half year we have only produced 10 units instead of 20. That is the reason, there is a reason why, then that's the reason for analyzing the variance. How come we produced half as compared to what we projected? 
many questions arise. Number one, our projections, were they professional projections? Were they based on industry or on farm basis? Industry means if it is transport industry, it's the whole industry, transport industry. If it is a farm basis, if you look at small scale, the, the public transport, you want to measure yourself against what you fit in. Okay. So while measuring the actual performance and uh, comparing it with the standard performance, there are many variants that can be analyzed. What variants are there? There are many. You look at what cost it. Was it poor publicity? Uh, besides poor publicity, was it, let's say, uh, a matter of, of uh, lack of resources, human resources, financial resources? These are things that go on when you are answering the question, why the variance? The strategies must also mention the degree of tolerance limits between which the variance between actual and standard. The positive deviation indicates a better performance, but it's quite unusual to exceed the target always. The negative division, an issue of common concern, uh, con uh, issue of concern because it indicates a shortfall in performance. Negative shows that's a fall in performance. Therefore, you need to do something. That's what it means. That's corrective action is needed. So. As you measure, you are looking at positive, that means it's an increase in better performance. And you need to measure that, really. When you talk about better performance, what do you mean exactly? Is it better in the farm? If it's a public transport, in public transport, you're looking at the border borders. How are border borders doing? If you are aiming at profits that double, are at border borders producing the same and so on so you are looking at e farm basis of comparison are you doing better than them others for example a university like ours like zitec university are we doing better in delivering learning in this mode compared to the others what are the results are students satisfied are we attracting more students are we taking our old students so that they are motivated about their school are they these are things that you look at when you look at the actual versus the standards. So this must mention the degree of tolerance. Yeah, how far can you tolerate? The tolerance level, they talk about plus minus. We are measuring, they say it's 10 centimeters plus or minus 0 0.001. That means there's a bit of tolerance between plus uh, 0 0.001 and minus. So that's the degree of tolerance you can accept. Are there things like those? That means they meet the average, they didn't meet the excellent stage, but they meet average, good. That's why you talk about good, uh, average, very good, and so on, excellent. We have all those because of the performance measures. The strategies must, uh, must mention the degree of tolerance, yes. Positive deviation indicates a better performance and negative is poor, yeah? Because if the person is positive, it means you're doing very well. Negative means you are actually not doing very well. We consider your strategies. Are they worth pursuing? Should we have new strategies? Should we look at a new direction, new approach? What exactly should we be looking at? That division is an issue of concern. And that's where uh, companies, organizations spend time looking at. Don't look at the positive, look at the negative. Because they tell you something about your performance. And maybe uh, before we go far, I want to look at uh, hmm, what are some of the causes of variances in, let's say, a given industry. If it is, let's say, a farm like doing a restaurant, middle middle level restaurant which serves about 150 meals a day, uh, 150 meals, yes, 150 meals a day, in a small restaurant. 150 uh, uh, meals a day. And what we're saying here is that you have strategic plan, which is in place. Maybe your sister them build it, put together. They want to increase on the 150 meals a day to 500 to 400 meals a day in five years' time. Yeah? Because they have done the projections and so on and so forth. So the question is half the year, I mean, half the period, let's say two years down the road, their performance is not what is expected to be. If there was halfway, we should have served about 300, we should be 100.
but we are only doing 200 below. And they're about 190, 180. So the meals we are serving per day. What could be causing some of those variances? So let's suggest some of the variances, yes? Align metrics with the corporate goals, checking on the cost of production and so on. Hmm? We can also assess customer demand, yes? Might be causing it through efficiency productivity. Yeah, yeah we call uh, customer demand. Yes, they may have changed. That's interesting. Your products and so on. Maybe now they have gone. If you are doing malindi dishes, the guys have gone into the uh, into bara dishes now. More interested in eating bara because it must be bad from cost. They are used to the malindi dishes. They want to eat bara meals. And here you are. You are projected in malindi. You're expanding. You need to realize that people they are looking at differently. So they less and less coming and so you can compare actual performance that means there are less people coming for the last one two two months three months you can say on average instead of 300 by now we are doing uh, at 100 150 still the same or one one eight a day or 200 days it's not doing very well the question you ask yourself is how do we what are these variants why do people not come is it the marketing you can now see pulling in the marketing is it the publicity team is it the customer care team who are these that where is the problem those are things we need to go to analysis and it goes into tough looking for the what we call the, the root cause what is the root cause of the variance they may not be either of that it could be the, the chef the meals are not tasty you know but you've done everything else ambience is nice nice african music going african beat nice soft that appeals to almost every african Every, I mean, every client. Mm -hmm. So, but what went wrong? So those are things that you look at when you analyze. You look at each department. Has there been any change in reception? Change in the restaurant? You know, in terms of managing? Change into the, all that, the ambience and so on, the setup. All those things are things you can analyze to find out why your sales the restaurant have gone down. And uh, also, custom. Also, you get to your client. You are what? You are employees. An area you may not have looked at. You have everything good. But the employees are not. Maybe they are not motivated. Whatever you are doing, they are left out. It's like uh, being aloof. This question is either just uh, like uh, we are just uh, here to work, but we our ideas are not taken. Hmm? These are some of the th things you look at. So when you look at the root cause of poor performance in the restaurant, you can end up with customer care is being affected. Why? Because the low morale in the employees. And that will take time because they don't come out clearly. They don't want to be seen with champion because they'll be sacked. So they work out quietly a system that frustrates your clients, not knowing that if the clients are frustrated, they will go away and their salaries will not be there. Again, that's a kill kid eh? They're not thinking. If it's a restaurant, two restaurant where the performance is in like that. I see some answers here. Variance could be caused by inadequate management. Yes, we talked about capacity. Maybe the supervisors are not trained well or they are not applying the skills of managing well. They may be shouting at the employees, uh, emotions are flying high. As a manager, you need to keep your cool. Even if employees are almost uh, shouting so much you will keep your cool as a manager and approach things in a manner that is sober, if I may use the word sober, a manner that will encourage other, you know, the employees to feel at home. Even if they are doing things behind the back there, they are also seen to be, they are valued. Employees should be seen as number one, that they are valued by the employer. In respect to what you're paying them, pay them enough, Big money, but if we are not valuing them, then they're not. So root cause, when you look at the drop in the, you are not meeting the standards in the restaurant. Now, I see a number of, uh, you know, the cost of production. Yes, the cost of goods. Yeah, maybe the prices and the quality, uh -huh. different preferences. People have changed preferences because they, have, they are not coming to a restaurant anymore. Variance can be caused by inadequate management. Yeah, we talk about lack of uh, resources. Yes, uh, the resources, for example, the inputs, the ingredients. You want to have the African dishes. Now we are moving away from the Malin dishes because you are in Malindi, but people want upcountry. And uh, here you are, changes in terms of strategy. Resource may not be there to do the mokimo you want to or whatever else, or whatever else, uh, kisses you say, saha and others. You, you know, to think about this. 
just think about these things so that you see you put them in perspective. When you analyze the variance, your strategy is to increase the capacity, to increase the employee, increase the, the, the sales by having more customers and this is the approach. And that's how you analyze that. Customer service causes variations. Variance can be caused by customers. Yes, tests and preferences. Yes, you almost Bogo here, Felicitas, non available standard quality. Well, materials, maybe raw materials. Yeah, you want specific uh, product and you don't have the raw materials. Change in market price. Yes, the pr market prices, but you have not changed your prices or market price for the raw materials or the input, right? Yeah, that's possible. And labor. Also, labor, the workers, they realize that you are paying them half what their competitors next door are earning. So, Again, that's a big point of contention. These fellows are suckers. Yeah, take away your, you know, this is a talk of employees. So you have to dig deep and understand when you are doing the uh, measurement. It's not just a, a checkbox. It's a question of soft information. Yeah, there is hard information which you can uh, indicate from the report, and there's soft information which normally and is not recorded. And uh, you look for it. None of the level standard change. In market price, I mean negative division. Okay, negative division. Uh, variation may be caused by poor selection of the area. Now you we are assuming you are holding everything possible. Eh? Location and area could be possible also if there are changes in the environment. Uh, broader national decision making, not involving others. Yes, involving the workers. You know, workers are important. They are workers. You are going to be some of these uh, uh, organizations. Could be a restaurant. Could be anything. And what can change your thinking in terms of causing variation? You know, research has shown that normally over 50% of the variations are caused this human error. Oh, human error. It means that is on employees. Human input. They are not in tune with what you are doing. And especially the field are left out. Then they will show you that they are better. Who knows better? It's us. Employees know better. So work with them very closely. That's what the advice is. They should be part of the process. We are measuring performance. First of all, when you set the standards, this is where we are going. We want to increase production by this percentage and so on and so forth. So increase production and you are part of it. That's what we do even in strategic planning and management of the institutions. Normally, you find the CEO and top management will sit there with the workers, employees, and the different departments and talk about how do we, we this is our strategic plan, and we need to implement it, and these are some of the things we need to do, and this is your role. This is the role of uh, senior middle management. Your supervisors this is the role of the senior management. This is the role of the council. This is the role of board of trustees. So each one knows, and these are the standards we expect to measure. And yeah, when we measure as we do the evaluation, then the deviations can easily be explained in terms of what it is. Yeah. The strength must be mentioned, must mention the strategies, the strategists must mention the degree of tolerance limits. Yes, they must be indicated. If deviation plus minus, maybe one percent, two percent, depending on what it is. Positive deviation indicates better performance, negative just as poor performance. Right. And when you look at positive, one has to look further. Don't just accept it as it is. You have to go further. When it's positive deviation, is it a hollow effect? Hollow effect. Something that, you know, people expect you to be better anyway, so it's better. Or is it measured in terms of actual performance? This is what it means. Negative could be caused by various. It could, should not be discarded if you have a place to learn from. In fact, many organizations, senior managers, experienced season managers, they love negative issues because they help you wake up and they look at what is it that has caused this and that's the food for thought if things are going well then you don't need me as a manager frequently but if things are not i should be there to bring in my decision making uh, skills to help and move the organism next level so deviations negative deviation is good to be actually gen, uh, fast enough to ensure that you are on course to continue with what you're doing in moving towards the goals and objectives set in your strategic plan. All right. Okay. We go along. Taking corrective action. Yeah. This is an area that's very, very interesting because once you get the information, so what? Hmm. You are doing very well. Performance is that, you know, you have to produce 10 units, you have produced 11. Oh, good. Excellent. Yes, the main is we have to expand to two branches. We're actually on the third one. Oh, good. All this is good. But is it always good like that? Do you have any corrective actions? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe. 
Maybe your standards you set are lower. Hmm. Maybe something else. In a situation, managers will continue to pre uh, present a course of action in order to take to be corrective action. Actions need to be undertaken on basis of the nature of the deviation. All this coming in here. But I may ask a question here. What suggestions do you give for falling cells in a supermarket? What suggestions would you give to management? You give to you give to management. Management as a corrective measure. Measure. Ooh, measure. The corrective measure. I'm just asking this question so that we can think a little bit more. In supermarket market. What suggestion? What suggestions would you, as an expert of strategic management, what suggestions would you, as an expert in strategic management, give as a corrective measure for falling cells in a supermarket? Take, for example, Taskis. Taskis, we have been complaining papers. You read recent papers and reason it is going down. Now, these are falling what? Falling cells. Assuming COVID was not there or it is there, what suggestion would you give this management? Can I get some response, ladies and gentlemen? Yeah? Let's get some responses. We're together, I guess. We're still together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just towards the end, anyway, not too far, but close by. There's a little interruption. You remember the timing a little bit? Yeah. Hmm. What suggestions would you give to management as a corrective measure for falling cells in a supermarket? May I hear from you? Some of you, you can grab the mic. Let's discuss. Yes. Hmm. Jacqueline, can I start with Jacqueline? What measure would you give Jacqueline? What some of the suggestions? Jacqueline, Jacqueline, are we together? Jacqueline, are we together? Hmm. Maybe she's a little off. Let's ask who has never spoken here. Yes, Jacqueline, are you there? I, 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 Jacqueline, are you with us? Yes. Your mic is on. Yes, Jack. Tell us, Jacqueline. What corrective, what suggestions would you give to management as a corrective measure for falling cells in a supermarket? Let's take task kids, which is experienced this bill. Give us two, three things in your own opinion. You also go to the supermarket, I'm sure. Yeah, go ahead. One, advertise more. Two, examine your pricing strategy. Yes, Three. it is what about, prices about what? Uh, prices. Hello? Hmm? Rising product. Mm -hmm. Three, connect with customers. Okay. How yes. do they connect with customers, for example? Can you tell us how you would advise them? Uh, I mean, what you would advise listen, them to do? Listen to your customer to understand mm -hmm. their needs and wants. Educate mm -hmm. them about the product. And finally, let the customer know you appreciate their business. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So really, you would spend time then to do some kind of a survey? Would you do a survey, a questionnaire, whatever? Yes. Yeah, that they tell you and you talk to them and maybe top management can come down to the ground level. Is that right? Yes. Yeah, to talk to the customers. Right. Are there any challenges to that? Because we are talking of COVID-19 eh? effects. You have suggested that COVID-19 effects coming in. You have thrown a span in the works. Would you recommend the same way or what direction? You talked about the prices and pick on prices. Would you still tell them about the prices when the COVID-19 is here? Yeah? With the COVID-19, mm -hmm. I would recommend actually changing on the pricing strategy because mm -hmm. right now things are bad. Mm -hmm. 
and they have to understand the customer need mm-hmm. so examining a pricing strategy should be fast mm-hmm. and also mm-hmm. connect with customers yeah mm-hmm. okay yeah. yes thank you thank you jacqueline thank you others i can see have given us a few suggestions here it's very good katule uh, the advice task is to have competitive advantage how do you do that katule let's ask katule Katule said have a competitive advantage. How do they do it? Let's say something about that. Katule, are we together? Katule, Margaret. Very far, Katule. Okay. Let's get somebody Mengati. Improving customer service in supermarket. How do you do that, Lemayan? Lemayan, are we together? Lemayan. Oh, so these people have not what? Thank you, thank you, improving that. But you need to say more about that. Eh? Emmanuel teach offering discounts to customers, providing after sales service, sharing information, customer services. Yeah, good. It's kind of almost like what uh, Jacqueline said. You connect the customers, and some of you have said the same thing, improving customer care. Giving offers, maybe the one get, uh, buy one, get one free. Yes, Kachomba. That's a good one, but you might deplete your stock very quickly if you bought them for 100,000 and you're giving away a second, and then it means you're actually going to make just 50,000. Unless the price is such that it covers. Yeah? If the price is such that it's three times, so even if you give away one, you know, it still make your profit. That's possibility. But it's a good suggestion. Suggestion. Regina Karonji, yeah, ensure customers are king. How would you do that, Regina? King or queen, how do we do that? Regina, Regina, Regina. How do we ensure customer is king or queen? Well, that's my first lesson in commerce, uh, teaching commerce in 1974, May. Oh, wow. Malima, are you serious? Yes, I am I'm using a small book, uh, which is uh, Commerce for Africa. And there was one of the comments there about customers, and retailers who advised that you must treat your customers as queens and kings that means you give them the best of service yeah so that's what it is thank you thank you for that now to uh, to why he was trying to say something to why you've not said anything can you say something to why regina says ensure customers are king yes uh, on your knees talks about prompt payment to suppliers to ensure that goods flow of services at times yes to today you want to say something yes you're back hello Tuvei. No, I'm typing. I'm typing. You are? I'm typing. typing. Okay. Uh, okay. You didn't want to say it exactly. <laughs> All right. You want to say it or just, just type? Okay. Thank you. Onyoni, you said pride, uh, uh, prompt payment to suppliers. Yes. Times reduction sales could be because of inadequate supply of goods. Yeah, it is inadequate supply. You pay from the last of care and so forth. You also remove some more shifts. Yeah, shift to the supermarket ready. Uh, okay. It's a question of suppliers. The question of money, less money, less, less income. You also negotiate with them and so on. Felicia Asbogo advised task, task is to exercise considerable control over sales and performance. Yeah, internal controls. Maybe that's another problem and you strengthen those. An activity, okay. Then Mambia connect to the customer by providing excellent service. Yes, one of the things we said, okay, in another class about trends that you know you must know your customer. You must the customers these days need personalized service. What your member, yeah, everybody treats the same personalized service because of the challenge you have. So people are dealing with as individuals and so on. Okay, let's so ensure meet customer needs and pay the supply on time. Yes, Brian Imansi Kadikazi. Better inventory management, yeah, from keeping stock that has been customer demand, yes. Ecology by treating them right and special way. <laughs> uh, uh, thank you, Raja Lord. Allow for room for customers to give their feedback. Yes, this is what is crucial basically because customers feel I'm disappointed here and I should eat. Went to the petrol station the other day and I was just fueling. Before I did that, there was this fellow ahead of me. He has been, this guy's been filled up and uh, he's taking his time to pay. <laughs> and uh, here I am, I am traveling, going long distance, coming from where? Oh, yeah. Uh, coming to Eldred. Here I am in uh, someone in Kambu. And I tell these fellows, man, let the fellow move aside. 
pay when he said allow the other customer to come in the supervisor will look at me as if where this man here you know where is he coming from the moon or he looked at me very strangely and i said now my friend the thing is when the person has finished you finish with him at the pump they, they move their vehicle just ahead there and so and if not uh, you know find a way where you cannot inconvenience one customer because of the inconveniencing of the other one, and so on so anyway just saying about that so in this case customers should be treated well in terms of corrective action that's very good in palais a lot of customers to give you feedback having offers for you as customers yes special offers and so on enhancing the channel of distribution yes availability and availability of resources oh, i don't know what uh, there so really when we talk about that question raised by malimu here uh, thank you very much for your contributions now we move taking corrective action Corrective action, actually rely on the customer. The market, key thing is the market. When you are going to the market, ensure that you have captured the market. And don't say, oh, the market is ours, now everything is okay. No, don't. Continue listening to the deep, deep process, uh, deep uh, culture. What is the market about? What key things are they looking for? Are we continuously satisfying them? What are your customer, what are your competitors doing? We are talking about talking corrective action. Don't just sit and correct. You have to find, it's again, a process of finding out what appropriate corrective action needs to be taken. Mm -hmm. Another and drastic corrective action is performing here, yeah, and so on and so forth. Going back to the process of strategic management. Right. Then we get to the important strategic evaluation. Now we come back to the importance of strategic evaluation. So evaluation is an important tool for assessing how well business has performed relative to its goals. Strategic evaluation. You want to see how well compared to our competitors. Why are we compared to our competitors? Because we are all the time in a competitive world. I mentioned this competitive world. And unless you are doing well in terms of touching, reaching out, you have uh, doing better out doing your customer your competitors you will be having a situation which is uh, brings you to almost stand still it's important to a way to reflect on achievements and shortcomings that you have had this is your use to examine the goals and themselves so now key ones are here as mentioned here deciding the destination decide the effective goals should be should be tangible steps that move you to where the company is going you are saying I want to be the best company in this city or in this country or this region. Then that's your view, 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 vision. Your goals are how do I achieve there? I want to buy best products, uh, quality wise, and so on. This is what I need to do to provide to the market so that I am the best in the market. My, I'm reaching my destination. Okay. The other one is about, you know, benchmarking your performance. Wow, this is where I want to spend a little time benchmarking. If you want to be the best, you want to benchmark. For information, the university currently is working on benchmarking with the top of the world institutions globally to be able to meet the needs of our clients, which is you students and others in the future, and also other stakeholders. We have Out, out. You have joined this. Uh, okay, so some. Without telling me the time. Yeah? Okay, benchmarking. Measuring performance in an important step in the strategic evaluation process provides a short snapshot of what we are doing. When you have set clear and quantifiable goals and so on, it's easy to see and measure how you are well you are performing relative to our objectives and others. Benchmarking looks at you are the who are the best and who can you are. Succeeding or falling, uh, succeeding or falling short is actually one of the things. You are either succeeding or falling short, you know, in terms of the importance. Although goals are milestones, the process of reaching them isn't at, at all easy. You know, in addition to simply measuring your outcomes relative to your goals, it's important as part of the strategic evaluation process to analyze how close you have come. You know, and you are doing 60%, 65%, you know, you're very close, but you are not there yet. You need to move and reach there when you, you talk about this. That's what it means with this. So this benchmarking, it's looking at whether you are succeeding or not, or failing, and finally, steering a better course. You are steering a better course forward. Yes, are you doing very well? 
if your business falls for short, for short meeting its goals, the strategic evaluation process is the opportunity to reflect on this. If your company has blown its, its goals out of the water, the strategic evaluation process is an important opportunity for you to create new set of goals that reflect your progress and challenge your new ways. Yeah, so steering a better course. So the importance, these are the importance we've said about uh, uh, strategic plan. With the notes are there, will be there. Principles here very quickly. There are four principles of strategy evaluation. One, consistency. Two, consonance. Ah, three, advantage and four possibility. Consistency is has to do with whether you are, your business operates much as the objectives. Are you really consistent? Consonance means what? Consonance refers to well, how well the business reacts to the change of the surrounding. It's a consonant. In mathematics, you see something on consonant, and anyway, maybe it's back there. It's actually you're looking at how well in the community. If customers' preference change or the competitive business build next door, business needs to be to be able to adopt and still be successful. Yeah. You are in concomitant. Concomitant is another word, which is closer to con consonants. Yeah. It's, you are actually going to. You like the tuning fork, eh? which is in physics, in physics. Tuning fork is when you click on it like that, one of the rocks, the other tunes the other and make notes. The other of them. Yeah? They're in consonants. They're together. When this happens this way, the other one will happen differently. It's a reaction. Are you ready? You're moving so that you do better. Advantage has to do with whether the business is competitive. We say this. If a consumer a consumer purchases product at, a, at their pre business instead of the another store, the business can remain competitive. Yeah. If they prefer you, you become competitive and the feasibility. So one of the principles is being advantage, consonance, and the other one is uh, feasibility here. Is it feasible? The principle is feasibility. Advantage and feasibility. Those are the four principles. We again provide the notes for this, and there are many examples you can look for in terms of this. Ladies and gentlemen, I've come to the end. And uh, last for reflection, any reflection questions that we want to ask. And so I want to thank each one of you for being there. And I think, uh, sorry for the interruptions. We have actually made them up. We've gone 28 minutes, uh, which is okay. We've taken into some little more time because of that. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, I want to end the session and I want to wish you well.